Welcome, AP Calculus AB students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School. Going to take a dive into example two from topic 1.5. My new notes from 1.5 really only have a pair of examples. Example one, we've already talked about how to find the limits of sums and differences and products whenever you have those tricky limits where maybe one or both may not exist. And now we're going to focus a little bit more on the idea of the composite function and how to deal with those types of limits. Again, these can be a little intense, so buckle up and we should hopefully get through this unharmed. So if we take a look at our notes here, I'm going to move my camera out of the way here so that we can see what's going on up there. It's the operations on limits and limits of composite functions. Now the standard rule for finding a limit of a composite function is going to look like something that you see there in that uh, orange samish, salmon, is that orange, salmon, pink? I don't know, it's some kind of a box, right, with some color. The rules for the limits of composite functions go like this. Let's say that you've got a limit as x approaches some value a some you know whole number a and you get k for that limit all right got it and let's say that f of x is some continuous function at x equal k now i know at this point in the game it's very likely that you guys are like did he say continuous function what the heck does he mean by that because the college board course and exam description really doesn't define continuity quite distinctively until a little bit later in unit one. So we're going to get into this word a little bit more seriously in a few more topics, a few more days, if you will. But for right now, I want you to think about a function that's continuous can be graphed without any holes, breaks, or asymptotes, all right, especially as it goes through that value of x that we called k. Now, let's say that we're interested in finding the limit of f of g of x. Now that's the composite, right? That's not a multiplication. That is not f of x times g of x. This is the function f evaluated at g of x. Well, generally speaking, what you can do is, if you'll allow me to use the words, push the limit through the outer function. That's really what's happening. We're taking this limb and just letting it skip over the f and finding itself planted in front of the g and therefore we could resolve that inner limit and then take a look and see well, what's happening there with the outside function f. Now as I said here this problem can be a little tricky and so if we read the very final sentence here while useful this rule can be very problematic if the inside functions limit does not exist um, or possibly if the outer function is not continuous at the value where the inner functions limit does happen to exist and those are the problems that are definitely going to be a little bit more interesting so without further ado let's take a look at example two that kind of rhymed i didn't plan for that so we're just going to look at example 2a in this video and i'll tackle examples uh, b and c in a subsequent video so once again if you watch the videos from example one you saw we have these two graphs f of x and g of x they're still here they're not going away but now in our example one we're going to find the limit as x approaches one of f of f of x. And so as I said before, what our goal here is, is to see what happens if we can push that limit inside of the outer function and just kind of see how this behaves. All right. Well, upon discovering that, if we find the limit of f of x as x approaches 1, we're going to see that, well, wait a minute, f of x as x approaches 1, that doesn't seem so bad. We get a value that looks like it's going to be 2, right? Or 3, sorry. <laughs> That's a 3, right? 3 is after 2. And so there's no question that this answer is certainly equivalent to 3. But have you taken a look at what f of 3 is going to reveal? And f of 3 is sort of a hot mess right now. Now, the common sort of misconception that's made at this point is to say, well, okay, well, the, the f of 3 doesn't exist. 
Well, what if I told you it did? Or the common misconception would say, oh, I see f of 3 is 2. What if I told you that that was not the correct answer? And it is not. But boy, would that be a very enticing multiple choice answer that a student would want to circle, right? And that's the most common misconception that I see with students on a problem such as this. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this three a little bit differently. I want to know how is it that you are arriving at that limit that is equivalent to three? Well, you come from below on the left side and you come from below on the right side. So it seems like our values might be 2.5, 2.7, 2.9, 2.99, 2.999. You get the idea, right? And so I want you to think about this three as more of not a destination, but a journey. We're approaching three from below, which is the same as approaching three from the left, right? If you're below three, you're to the left of three. It just depends, you know, how you orient yourself and look at the axis. So values like 2.7, 2.8, 2.9 would be to the left of 3 on the number line. And so what that means is we're not going to be looking at f of 3, but we're going to be looking at the limit of f of x as x approaches 3, guess how? From the left. And that takes care of everything that we need. Because at this point, we can look at our graph and we can see on this f function as we approach 3 from the left side, we are going to get a y value that's approaching 1. And that is our correct answer. Not 2, like we might have misconceived, not does not exist, not even 3. Now, as I've been doing with my other videos, let's take a look at some graphical proof of how we got this answer. So once again, just to remind you, in my page 1.1, I have sketched a piecewise function that will depict f of x. I'm going to go to my page 1.3 of my TI Inspire software, and I'm going to graph the composite function of that f of x, which we called f1, of f1 of x. So there's f of x inside of f of x. And if you recall, our example was having x approach 1. All right, so gosh, let me... Get out of my way, there's stuff there. So if I were to go down here and then look up above, as x is approaching 1 right there, right there, right there, I notice that the y value from either side is also approaching that 1, which, if you recall, was the answer that we got. And so there you see some really vivid graphical evidence. Stick around. We're going to take another quick, quick look at examples B and D and hopefully get you guys feeling a lot more comfortable about these tricky limits involving composite functions. Until next time, we'll see you later.